this guy. Well, hello. I'm at a guy by the name of Dewey's Place, and he's going to show me a lot of stuff about composting and set up about his worm bins and things like that. But right now he has some chickens in here, and he he told me that chickens are great composters. And um, he's going to tell me the reasons why chickens are great composters. Hello. Welcome to Full Circle Green. This is my pad. I'm building a project here of trying to educate people that we can't be as wasteful as we are and sustain our human society as it is. I was just telling AJ about how important chickens are for composting. If you take a look at this mulch here that I have, last fall I laid down cardboard and put eight inches of mulch over this. The, as soon as I let the chickens out, the first place they're going to go for is this. As a matter of fact, I shouldn't let them out, but I'm going to. Because it, it's late enough now that they can't tear up my wife's garden, okay. which she gets excited about. But they'll spend their first hour in here digging and scratching and composting that debris down. So you said you put cardboard in there? How much cardboard? Was it like whole sheets of cardboard yeah, and stuff like you that? Want to cover, you want to cover the entire... We'll let these girls out. Hey, girls, come on out. <laughs> yes, and chickens are... Back to the cardboard. Essentially what you do, and this was gardening with Jay Prugiano, I believe is the guy's name, don't get me wrong. Type in food forest and you'll find Jay from Jersey. He's where I learned it from, but essentially you lay down cardboard. If you wanted to put a garden on that green grass right there, you lay down cardboard or contractor's paper. I'm a tree hugger, so instead of buying contractor's paper, I can have access to many, many cardboard boxes. Instead of going in the landfill, lay down cardboard, cover everything up, Lay down eight inches of mulch. Next spring, you come in, you move the mulch to the side, dig a hole, plant your plants. Boom, you're gardening. You plant your trees, everything. The, mo or the, the mulch reserves moisture. The cardboard layer keeps the wood chips separate from the ground. And essentially, you're creating a natural environment of a fallen forest. And a forest will only grow on a fallen forest. As you can see, my girls went to town brown already. So what do the chickens actually do? What are they doing with their claws right now? They're digging for bugs and worms and microorganisms that are living in the under the mulch. And what I've found out is where I put the cardboard down in mulch is the first place they go. Over in the garden I put down mulch and I had it all mulch. I'm really behind on my mulch right now. But around <laughs> the back side of the garden house is where I laid down cardboard and put down the mulch on top. When they go over to that garden, the first place they go to is where the cardboard and the mulch is laying at. It's like here, they'll tear this apart now for a good half hour. So you can imagine if there was produce scraps and whatnot in here, because they're not getting green, if there were produce scraps and stuff in there, they'd be tearing it up. They're after the worms, the microorganisms that, or the worms that help break down the compost, they'll be feeding that. That's one of the reasons why I'm really trying to build up my herd of red wigglers because my future home for red wigglers will be over here. This will all be fenced in for my chickens all the way around the perimeter here because I, it's easier to fence them in here than it is to fence off all my gardens and my food forests. So it's easier to contain them than it's not. And this is not big enough because after I started cooping them up, I went from seven eggs a day from nine hens down to about four eggs a day. Hmm. So they're kind of ticked at me for locking them up. <laughs> they won't listen to me and stay out of the wife's garden, so what am I supposed to do? So they're kind of saying you're not the boss of me? Exactly. <laughs> well, I think it's more because they get a lot more nutrition out here in the okay. natural environment than locked up in here. Granted, they're happy chickens. They got a nice run here. I keep it clean. They got a nice run, but unfortunately, Mother Nature can provide better than us humans can any day of the week. That's right. So essentially what I'm doing here is I built a big branch pile and letting this compost and break down because I'm hoping that in our environment I can overwinter red wigglers in here. I'm giving this probably three years and I'll keep adding to this branch pile for the next three years and hopefully have enough bedding in there that I can support the red wigglers in there throughout the winter. Now the beauty of this is them red wigglers are going to go out here in the mulch and everywhere else and my chickens are going to get to feed on them. So it's a natural food bed for my chickens also. And then I've got another one built back there because the fence will go all the way around the back side of these groves here and come back up to the corner of the blacksmith shop. And we'll get into my chicken coop. If you guys are interested in chicken coops and whatnot, 
just uh, let let AJ know and I would be happy to go through of how I went about building this and how we make it secure from the predators and critters because yep. we have to protect our chickens from them. Yeah, so if you want to know the setup, what is chicken coop, leave it in the comments, you know, in the comments box and I can touch base because he wants to invest a lot of his personal time to share his knowledge and information. Yes, I want to, mainly I want to educate you people that we are way too wasteful of a creature. See? Humans are a very wasteful creature. And I believe that. I want to change that. So if AJ is willing to help, I'm willing to help AJ out. Thank you. And so thank you, viewers. we all work together, we can do it. That's right. So, brings me to a point that man is supposedly the most intelligent creature on the face of this earth. If that's the case, ask yourself, why are we so destructive? I rest my case. <laughs> Did? Welcome to the blacksmith shop. That's, that's a good home um, case. <laughs> Can't argue with that. <laughs> Hold on for a second. Hold on for a second. My phone kind of. Okay. okay. Welcome to the blacksmith shop. Here I do blacksmithing too. I'm also a blacksmith. So if you guys are interested in that, leave it in the comments section with AG. I love showing that off and educating people about that. We'll start off with the. Uh, the beginning of the worm farm. This here is a different worm farm than most are used to now. These are millworms. Millworms are an excellent, excellent protein source. Excellent protein source and calcium source. It's very easy to take care of if you want to come in here closer. This is essentially my farm here from here on down. This is my mother bin. This is where all my mother beetles are at. And they just get fed oatmeal. And of course my asparagus is in season so I'm using asparagus for their moisture content so the scrap pieces of the asparagus I give them for moisture this has got a screened bottom so essentially what happens is the darkling beetle is what this is it's a darkling beetle they burrow down and bury their eggs so their eggs fall through into this batch this here is my nursery this is where the eggs and whatnot fall in from the beetles and then from there they will go down here this here is at the beginning of this month I took this out from under here and put fresh bedding under it. This is the babies. In another month or so, they go from there because I got to keep my trays rotating because every month I just do it at the first of the month because it's easiest for me to remember. Bam, it's the first of the month I got to overhaul my worm farm. So this is one month's production of mealworms. I don't know if you'll be able to see them. There's oh, major, yeah, see them now. See major them moving, movement. Yeah. I don't know if you can focus in on that. I see them now. But there is buku worms yeah, in there. Yeah, I'm in there. So that's about one month's supply. Now my chickens go absolutely berserk when I take this out there and feed them. And that's just oatmeal in there that you feed them? Just oatmeal and then you have to put in um, wet fruit. I like, I use like last year I had a lot of leftover squash. I picked all my squash and squash keeps long. So I was able to feed them through the winter. You just have to keep something in there for them for moisture. I have them in this refrigerator set up or freezer set up here just simply to keep them warm because I don't keep my shop at 75, 80 degrees and they like 70 to 85 degrees and I want to be able to build up my farm to be able to feed my chickens because they're an awesome protein source. So how are millworms different from wet red wigglers or earthworms or night crawlers? What makes them unique? What makes them unique is they, they are f feeding grain and they are very high in protein and they're human consumable. Meaning that we can make, and I will, once I have enough of them here, I will make protein bars and whatnot oh. out of these mealworms for people to try. Oh wow. Now I know people are freaking out. You're going <laughs> to eat worms? But you'll go down to the restaurant mm -hmm. and you'll pay $35 to eat a freaking lobster. And I mean, come on, think about it. That's the biggest, nastiest water bug there is. Yeah. But you'll pay $35 to eat that thing. Yeah. I guarantee you right now, I got absolutely no problem. Let's find a nice, healthy one here. Absolutely no problem. That's a live worm. No problem. You just chowed down on a worm. Very tasty. <laughs> Very tasty. He just munched well, it down. The beauty of this is, is these guys have to have a clean environment. I can't have any mold or anything okay. like that. And we're red wigglers. They, they can digest and use the microorganisms to help break down their food. Okay. And these guys here more or less are eating raw grain. Here's a nice one. So what I do, that's after one of the worms has hatched from a pupa oh, wow. to a beetle. So okay. this is a very young one because he's still light. Mm -hmm. He will turn dark. Hmm. 
So whenever I'm in here poking around, because every morning I come in and I wet this down and I wet this down because they like humidity too. So every morning I come in here, I kind of brush through. If I see some beetles, I keep throwing them in the parent bin. And I don't ever really sort them. And whatever doesn't get fed out of this bin by the end of the month, I throw in the big overhaul bin. And these guys here are my, my new strain. I'm trying to make a strain of worms that can handle the cold weather and still reproduce in the cold weather. So these do not get any supplemental heat. They don't get anything other than grain and they have to fluctuate with the temperature in the shop here, which I normally in the winter time, I hold it at about 45 degrees. So how fast does uh, the reproduction phase for these? Do they reproduce uh, pretty fast? I or? knew you were going to ask me okay, that. I okay. knew you were going to ask me that. <laughs> 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 I knew you were going to ask me that, but... <laughs> <laughs> and I did not have that information, okay. but if you check out uh, wax worms or darkling beetle, uh -huh. they've got their cycle on there because they go from, they go through three stages. They go from beetle or egg to pupa, which I know I can find, well, no, not, not in that one. Pupa ain't there yet. I know I can find a pupa in here. Nope, that's a... And of course, somebody don't have his glasses on, I'm getting old, I can't <laughs> see no more. There's another beetle. Oh wow. That one there's a couple of days old too because he's already starting to turn brown. So you don't get grossed out with bugs? Absolutely you know? not. Bugs are a beautiful thing. Bugs outweigh man by seven times. Wow. So we better learn to like them because I guarantee you when we're long gone because we screwed everything up, yeah. the bugs are still going to be crawling around and re-inhabit this earth and rebuild it, bring it back so we can come in and screw it up again. I hear you. That's awesome. I mean, I don't mean to be blunt, but seriously no. people. We need to do something different. We're again, we're supposed to be the most intelligent life forms. Think about that. That's why I'm getting this guy on video because <laughs> he's to the point. You gotta hear the truth sometimes, people. If you can't handle the truth, that's too bad. Yeah. I'll boy up. There's supposed to be another lyrics in there, but I'll keep that to myself. <laughs> so the waste product from the millworms is what they call frass. Oh, sorry. So this is essentially what I feed them. Oh no, wait, that's cornmeal. Never mind. I feed them cornmeal too, but my worms like the cornmeal. I know red wiggers like cornmeal. Yes, they love cornmeal. And so the frass that comes out of there is more or less after they're done eating and they poop it out, then they have frass, which is, it is very fine. And you'll see little white chips in there and chunks in there. Them are eggshells. I put that in there for grit for my red wigglers. So this is a combination of a little bit of cornmeal, mostly uh, millworm frass and then I take a brick and a piece of plywood and I just keep rolling my mm. eggshells until they're about the consistency of sand okay and then I add that to it so this is more or less feed that I feed my wigglers I do not have enough produce to be able to feed them produce because number one I like to eat yeah <laughs> so I don't waste food yeah so I don't have near the uh, vegetables and stuff so this worm bin is a little different than than what most are used to. I use strictly leaves for their compost bedding. Okay. So it's mostly all leaves and then I feed them this. Last fall when I started this thing up, I had it this full with leaves. So it's already oh. broke down this far and I have not agitated it yet. So how many worms did you start out with? How many I started pounds? out with uh, two pounds of red wigglers and my population is down. So I'm hoping AJ can help me out with that because my first herd I lost. I don't know okay. why. And now the second herd, they just don't seem to be populating like they should because they should double every 90 days. Yep. And mine, I think, are cutting in half every 90 days. I don't know. Okay. I don't understand why. So this here, as you can tell, I always feed this on this side. So they're all over here. This side over here, I do not feed any. And you can tell. Why don't you feed that side? Because I'm doing an experiment to see if they like hanging out with it, if they like this food. Oh, I got you. Okay. So it's all about experimentation. Okay. So knowing that they do, mm -hmm. and it looks like they could use some feed again. So I essentially, I just mm. sprinkle a little over the top and away we go. So awesome. every few days, well, back when I had a big herd, they'd eat that much in a matter of two, three days. Okay. They'd be gone. But now, like I said, my herd keeps eliminating and I don't understand why. I built this uh, through, this is a through composter style, so I never have to take that stuff out of there to get my worms out or anything. Essentially there's two trays in the bottom of it, 
and there's still some of the paper in from when I lined the bottom of this. Mm -hmm. And the way this critter works, if you look down here, there's three rods going through the bottom. Can you get good yep, light good, on that? Good. There's three rods going through the bottom, and on each one of these rods, I've got fingers welded on them. So that as I turn this handle, it turns those fingers. Oh, wow. And those fingers are interlocked with each other, so they awesome. tip like this, okay. and the, the uh, castings can fall through the bottom. So you just keep adding to it, and every... I mean, I haven't, I haven't cycled it because... But as you can look inside of here, it kind of loosens up the whole bed when you move it. So the worms like air too. So you just rock that back and forth a few times. And your castings come out the bottom. That's cool, I like that. So a question for you. Yes. What made you um, get started with red wigglers? Who told you about red wigglers and where did you get your worms from, you know? I got my first, well actually I got both of my orders through um, Uncle Jim's Worm Factory. Okay. And I mainly got into it because I am a, I hate to use the term tree hugger, but I am mm -hmm. a tree hugger. Okay. I love nature more than I do anything else, you know, and I look at our great planet and the way we're destructing it. So I thought there's got to be a way that we can get rid of some of this food waste. And number one, I found out that better than 30% of our landfill is food waste. Mm -hmm. That just blows my mind. I mean, like, seriously, you're trying to tell me we can't feed the people when we're throwing mm -hmm. a third of it away? It's crazy. It's ludicrous in my mind. So mm -hmm. one thing that I wanted to do is I wanted to get, I'm trying to work on a full scale. That's what Full Circle Green's all about. I'm trying to get a big scale with red wigglers mm -hmm. and the millworms and chickens mm -hmm. and pigs. All these are great composters for us. And instead of us throwing that in the hole, this doesn't make sense to me. We seen out, I was telling you about the protein factor of the millworms and the black soldier fly, we'll get into that too. But the protein factor of the millworms is awesome. We are in our ocean seining out tons and tons of mill or fish meal every year and turning right around and throwing tons and tons of fish meal in the the landfill. Yeah. It's like, what's wrong with you people? You're supposed to be intelligent, remember? Yeah, We're right. supposed to be intelligent. Yep. But anyway, that doesn't make no sense to me. So that's actually where I got into the red wigglers was when I was researching the black soldier fly and as far as how they compost it. Okay. And then I YouTube always recommends what's good for me. Sometimes mm -hmm. they're right on track, but mm -hmm. other times, really? Why would I be interested in this? You all know about that. Yep. But anyway, that's right. <laughs> bottom line is, is I got interested in the black soldier fly because they will eat anything that once lived. So they'll wow. eat what the red wigglers will plus then some. You can throw them raw meat, you can throw oh, them wow. all kinds of goodies and they tear it up. Now they are like, don't quote me on this, but I believe it's 64% protein and 30% fat, which is very, very nutritious. And they are also edible by humans. You can roast them, they're supposed to have a nutty flavor. Now, I have oh. not yet been able to experience <laughs> that, but I am going to give it a... I'm not scared. Okay. I'll eat anything that don't eat me first. <laughs> it doesn't scare me. <laughs> well, okay. I mean, it's like I said, it's compar It's all in perspective. Yep. We're the only country that finds it disgusting That's or right. weird to eat bugs, where there's other countries that they're a delicacy. Yeah. You know, and we think, oh, my God, you know, put yourself in... And they do make um, millworms for human consumption that are flavored with uh, different, uh, like Cajun and whatnot, you oh. can buy mealworms for people. And there's a reason why they can sell them in the store at the price they sell them at for feeding birds. Birds love them. Oh, yeah. Birds live off of bugs. Yeah. A bird doesn't have a house that's heated. Mm -hmm. The bird doesn't have clothes that he can throw on extra clothes for when it's cold outside. He doesn't have clothes he can take off when it's hot. He doesn't get air conditioning. No, he's got to live with the elements. That's right. That poor bugger's living solely off of bugs. Oh, wow. Bugs and seeds. So awesome. they must be doing something right. Yep. And I ask you, are the birds and the rest of your environment around you as destructive on this planet as we are? There's another question for you to think about. Okay. <laughs> well, we just found out the chickens are where they're not supposed to be, heading into his wife's garden. So there might be an eight-piece snack tonight. We're not sure about that. <laughs> Chicken dinner. <laughs> you go ahead. I'll follow you. <laughs> Essentially, as you can tell, I was telling you about the cardboard over there uh -huh. and the wood mulch laying on top. Check out Gardening with Jay Prugiano, I believe is his name, but... Just punch in food for us. You'll find him. He's an awesome guy. He, he does a great job.
But I essentially, I started laying cardboard down there and over and mulched it. This here is just mulch on dirt. As you can see, they're tearing that up. <laughs> and there ain't a whole lot going on out here. So the cardboard and the mulch definitely do work in my opinion. Because the worms are going to break down the mulch. They go back down in the ground, poop out castings, which fertilizes your your garden or flower bed, whatever. And we all know that red wiggler castings are probably the best fertilizer you can get. It's 100% organic, true organic. Now, we ain't gonna go in on organic because I'll get myself in trouble. <laughs> so, <laughs> as we're talking, you're talking about um, soldier flies. You yes. said they can eat um, their body weight a day. They'll eat their body weight in a day. Okay. And here again, don't ask me their life cycle or how okay. long, but okay. it's from larvae, from larvae to soldier fly. Once the fly hatches out of the larvae or the pupa, mm -hmm. he's got four days to find a mate, mate and he dies. They're beautiful flies because they don't have mouths, they don't have an eating mechanism because they only eat while they're in the larvae stage. And once they are hatched out of their pupa and turn into a fly, they no longer eat. So they got four days to find a mate and then they pass on. Lay their eggs and the cycle starts That's all over crazy. again. That's just crazy, okay. But yes, they'll eat uh, one time, or their body weight a day. So if you've got 10 pounds of black soldier fly larvae, you can eat 10 pounds of, I'm not gonna say garbage. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna define that right now. You can take care of 10 pounds of food waste a day. Oh. There is a big difference between food waste and garbage. Garbage is man-made crap. Food waste is man-grown food that we're too snaky to eat and throw it away. That's food waste. That's not garbage. It is food waste. Anything that once lived is not garbage. It is food. Period. <laughs> Thank you again for your time. I appreciate the time you guys sent me. Please send the message forward. Let's be a little more cautious, people, about how we consume our food and what we throw away. Red wigglers are an excellent composter. Chickens are an excellent composter. Pigs are an excellent composter. And they're all good eating. Every one of them are good eating. So I thank you for your time. And please leave comments if there's some things you want us to touch on a little closer or whatever. Just let AJ know and I'll be more than happy to keep spreading the word. What's the name of your business one more time that you're starting up? The business, actually, I'm trying to build a education center on all of these topics. And I want to call it Full Circle Green. And essentially the future of Full Circle Green is a greenhouse that I want to put up over here in front of the barn once I get it cleaned up. And I want to build a pass-through greenhouse that is not hooked up to the grid that I can grow food year round all the way through the winter and here in Iowa I'm in north central Iowa here so you guys know what it's like we get pretty nasty winters I'm hoping to be able to pull that off without being tied to the grid in any way and my last question for you you're talking about you want to have like a nice worm farm inside this big yes. shed that or barn a, that is the size of worm farm that I'm looking at I would love to use that entire shed that's a 35 by 50 foot shed that I would love to turn that whole thing into an industrial size worm farm for mainly composting leftover produce from my local grocery stores. I'm sure they'd be more than happy, but I'm under the understanding that they throw a mess of food away every day. And in order for me to compost that, I'd have to have at least, if red wigglers eat half of their body weight a day, I'd need at least 500 pounds of red wigglers to take care of a couple of few local grocery stores around in our area just to eat that food turn it into fertilizer to grow your flowers or grow your vegetables or whatever it may be so it's this is big scale i'd love to get there if there's anybody out there that wants to uh fund this project and think it's awesome hook me up <laughs> hey you hook never know <laughs> you never know i just want to say thank you dewey for taking time out to do this you educated me a lot on the mealworms and chickens and everything so I know our viewers are really excited about your input, and we're looking forward to doing another video in the future. So yep. once again, thank you for your time. Thank you, AJ. Yep. Appreciate it. Bye. Bye. Okay, I have just one more footnote for you all. I want you all to remember, this earth is our garden. The entire earth is our garden. Just because it happens on the other side of the pond doesn't mean it doesn't happen in your garden. I only own a small piece of this, but take care of your garden. Thank you.